Hey, this is Mr. Masonette, and what we're going to do in this tutorial is practice writing linear equations for the four lines that are shown on this graph. So we're going to start with this red vertical line. Now, when writing an equation for a vertical line, what you do is you identify what value it is crossing on the x-axis. In this case, our red line is crossing negative 6. And what you do is you start by writing x, and then you write equal to the value that it crosses on the x-axis, which in this case is negative 6. And that is it. x is equal to negative 6. If you had a line going up and down right here through negative 9, you would write x equals negative 9. If the line were going up and down right here through positive 5, we would write the equation x equals positive 5. Now, we can't write an equation in slope-intercept form for vertical lines because Vertical lines do not have slope. In fact, we would say the slope is undefined. A horizontal line has a slope of zero, but a vertical line has an undefined slope. So just simply write x equal to whatever value that line crosses at the x-axis. All right, now let's take a look at this orange horizontal line. So what you do with any horizontal line is you start by writing the variable y is equal to. And after the equal sign, just write what number the line is crossing through on the y-axis. In this case, it is positive 4. So the equation to represent that orange horizontal line is y equals positive 4. Now, you could write a horizontal line in slope-intercept form, but watch what would end up happening. So let's say we have y equals mx plus b. Now, we know one thing for sure about any horizontal line, that the slope is always going to be 0. So if we went ahead and we substituted the variable m, which represents slope with 0, we would be multiplying 0 by whatever x we chose to plug in. So for example, let's say I chose this point right here on the orange line. That point is located at positive 5, positive 4. So what we would do at that point is we would multiply our slope of 0 by that x value of positive 5. And we would end up substituting y with 4. So what we would end up getting is 4 equals 0 times 5 is 0. So it's like we can just cross this off. And all we have remaining is a b. So no matter what, b is going to be equal to 4. So let's think about that for a moment. We know that this piece of our equation ends up turning into 0. So we can just get rid of everything right here. And all we have left right here is a b. And because b is equal to 4, we can just go ahead and switch b with 4. So I'm going to erase this here and replace it with a 4, which is the same thing that we got right here. So the shortcut for a horizontal line is just write y equals and then figure out where it crosses the y-axis. And it is going to be that location or that value that you're going to write after your equal sign. All right, let's go ahead and figure out what the equation is for this green line right here. So I'm going to use the slope-intercept formula, which is y equals mx plus b. And I'm going to start by figuring out the slope of this line and substituting that with the variable m. So what we're going to do is just find two definitive points on our line here. So here is a point, and here is another point. Now, if we start from this point and we go up two units, we would say that the change in y values is positive 2. And then we would move to the right horizontally three units. So the slope of this line is two thirds. So we write y equals two thirds x, and then we just figure out where our line crosses the y-axis because b represents the y-intercept, and it crosses the y-axis at negative five. So after this x, we write minus five, and that's all there is to it. Now, let's say we wanted to use two different points on this line to find slope. It really didn't matter what two points that you used. Just make sure you are able to easily identify the x value and the y value of the point you choose. For example, I could have chosen this point because it is on that line, 
but then I'm not sure if this point is exactly two and a half on the X. It could be like 2.6. I'm not sure if it's negative three and a half or negative 3.4. That's why it is important to select two clearly defined points when finding the slope of that line. Let's say I would have picked this point right here and this point right here because maybe my eyes just did not see this point. That would still be okay. That would just mean that you would be able to simplify slope after figuring out what it is. So if we chose this point, we would have to go up one, two, three, four, and then we would have to go over six. And four over six can be reduced to be two over three. All right, let's go ahead and determine the equation that represents this black line right here. Now, right away, we can see that our line is moving downwards from left to right, which means that the slope of this line is going to be negative. So what we're going to do is write y equals, and then we're going to figure out what the slope is. So let's go ahead and select two points located on our line. I'll just use these two points. And we can see that the y value goes down one or negative one and to the right we move one. So the slope is negative one over one. So after our equal sign we're going to write negative one over one x and then after x we just have to figure out where the line crosses the y-axis or the y-intercept and in this case it crosses the y-axis at positive three. So we just write plus three at the end of our equation. Now we just have to simplify our equation here. Now, negative one over positive one is equal to negative one. So the equation of this line is y equals negative one x plus three. Now, if you ever have a one or a negative one for the coefficient of x, what we normally do is we do not write the number one, we just write the variable x and because this is negative one we just write negative and the reason for that is quite simple that's because whenever we multiply anything by one it is always going to be equal to that thing you are multiplying one by for example one times two would be two one times three would be three and one times x would be x so we don't have to write a one in front of the x because that's just kind of extra writing so y equals negative x plus 3 is the equation that would represent this line right here. Now, once you have determined what the equation is for your line, what you can do is you can pick any value for x that you want, plug it in for x, and then add 3 in this case, and it will automatically tell you what the y is equal to. So we can put any number into x, which is called our input. For example, let's just put positive 5 in for x. So we know our equation has a negative in front of it. And what we're going to do is we're going to plug a 5 in for x and add 3. And if we add negative 5 to positive 3, that would be negative 2. So what that means is if we were to look at our graph where 5 is on the x-axis, it should give us a y value of negative 2. So let's go ahead and find positive 5 on the x-axis which is right here. And then we go down to our black line and we can see that at that point, it does have a value of negative two for the y value. So once you have figured out what the equation is that represents your line, you can plug any value that you wish into the x value of your equation and solve, and it will tell you what the y value is for that specific x value. Hey, I just want to say thanks for checking out this math tutorial. Please don't forget to hit that subscription button and activate notifications so you can be informed as I upload new math tutorials that just might help you with your math homework. Until next time, this is Shane Masonette with Masonette Math.